This is a presentation on sonography cases, essentials to know. My name is Suzanne Johnson and I'm a gynaecologist from Southampton. This presentation will feature ovarian endometriomas, both typical endometriomas, atypical endometriomas and suspicious features of malignancy. We use the IOTA terminology from uh, literature going back to 2000 on terms and definitions, giving us a system for describing adnexal masses, including ovarian endometriomas. And this paper described a typical endometrioma as a cyst with one to four locules with ground glass echogenicity cyst contents, no solid component, no vascularity in a premenopausal patient. This is an example of such an ovarian endometrioma. You can see it's unilocular, there's one locule, no solid component, the echogenicity is ground glass, it's less than 10 centimetres in a premenopausal woman. And it's so obviously an endometrioma that this has become an iota benign simple descriptor of an endometrioma, something you recognise immediately when you see it. One of the differentials is a hemorrhagic cyst, and you can see here on the left of the screen, this is a unilocular cyst with mixed echogenicity contents. Um, there are some fibrin strands running across the cyst, and this is uh, indicative of fresh hemorrhage. Um, a hemorrhagic cyst can contain clot, which you might think initially is a papillation or solid tissue, but clot wobbles, or well, sometimes it does, and solid material never, wall um, never wobbles. Uh, and in this second example, you can see a concave surface and some calcification with shadowing. Again, um, a papillation solid component wouldn't have a concave uh, surface. So you can say these are, are clots. And also, of course, these would regress in about three months time. So if you weren't sure and you rescanned, it would have uh, disappeared by the second scan. Uh, in this case, it's not quite clear. There's been some hemorrhage, but what is it? Um, and when you put the um, color Doppler on, you can see that this is a double corpus luteum uh, and that the endometrium is in the early luteal phase and there is some physiological hemorrhagic fluid in the patch of Douglas, all indicative of recent ovulation. So this is a, a double corpus luteum. Sometimes you see a corpus luteum right next to an endometrioma and there, this is the corpus luteum and this is the endometrioma. And again, you can see that this is a slightly thick walled and it would be uh, uh, vascular at the periphery if you put color Doppler on and there's some um, little clot sediment in there, whereas this is the more typical ovarian endometrioma. Sometimes endometriomas uh, communicate with each other, as you can see in this example, um, that there's a more established endometrioma and this fresher old corpus luteum, early hemorrhagic cyst has ruptured into this other endometrioma just there. You can see it just there. So what's this? This patient uh, attended a clinic aged 67 with a feeling of pressure on her bladder. She'd had a hysterectomy and a single oophorectomy. She had ischemic heart disease, type 2 diabetes and a high BMI, so was essentially a high risk patient with a normal CA125. On transvaginal ultrasound, we saw that her remaining left ovary was 115 millimetres and it was a unilocular cyst, single locule, no solid component, with a little bit of sediment here, um, low level echogenicity with streaming, um, some sediment which could have been a solid component, there's no vascularity in it, minor vascularity in the cyst wall, no shadowing, no ascites. Uh, and uh, streaming is where you hold your probe still, you put color Doppler on, and then just the energy of the color Doppler is making these particles drift. Uh, and you see that with blood and mucin. So when we calculated adnex, uh, this cyst came out as a risk of malignancy of 31%. And in the ORAD system, this is a group four lesion. And the histology was a mucinous cyst adenoma. So just to make sure again, an endometrioma is unilocular, ground glass echogenicity, less than 10 centimetres, premenopausal, and it's a benign simple descriptor. So then atypical endometriomas, uh, these are in the minority and on imaging, uh, these have been described as being unilocular solid with ground glass echogenicity, avascular papillary projections with no or minor vascularity. 
Um, this patient was 51 and presented with pain and a family history of ovarian cancer and a raised CA125. Um, she had this cyst, which was 72 millimeters in its maximum diameter. Um, it had uh, two locules, at least in this image, and a little smaller uh, solid component, uh, low level echogenicity, um, avascular population with uh, no ascites. Uh, on ADNEX risk scoring, this came out at 4.5%, and it, she was in ORADS group 3. And on histology, this was a benign ovarian endometrioma. So it's another example of an atypical endometrioma. Uh, would this be another one? This uh, patient was 59 and presented um, uh, on scan with an antiverted retroflex uterus, kissing ovaries, and a frozen pelvis. And you can see that um, her cyst was uh, 109 millimeters. It's multilocular. It's not clear whether this is these are just you know, a few little locules together or is it a papillation. Um, there's ground glass echogenicity, minor vascularity in the capsule, no shadowing and no ascites. We went TA to get better views of the cyst because it was more than 10 centimeters in size and transabdominally. Um, you sometimes get a better measurement in large cysts. Uh, and I wanted to get more detail of the interior of the cyst and to check the omentum. So you can see that I didn't pick up any further uh, worrying detail about the cyst transabdominally. So how to describe it? Uh, does it fit any of the simple descriptors? Um, the answer is no, it doesn't. For starters, it's uh, larger than 10 centimeters, so immediately it doesn't fit a single descriptor. So then what to do next? Uh, I did that next next, so I put all these items into this uh, um, risk calculator and it gave me a risk of malignancy of 17%. So the risk of malignancy and benignity adds up to 100 and then the system automatically divides the risk of malignancy into four subgroups, borderline, stage one, stage two to four and metastatic to the ovary. And in this case you can see that the, the, the next highest one is borderline. So Adnex thinks this is a borderline cyst uh, but it, that falls in the malignant category. What to do next? So this consensus statement uh, gave us a system of what to do next. When you've done an ultrasound, it's not normal. You might have an expert in the room or you might do the ADNEX model. The ADNEX model gave us a risk of 17% uh, and it was ORADS route 4. So then we know this patient should be referred to a gynae oncology centre. If you were to do ORADS, um, you, there's two ways of doing it. Well, you can do the risk category by the IOTA model, and that's because ADNEX at 17% is more than 10%, so it's a group for ORADS. Or you can look at the, the morphology and look, use the lexicon to describe uh, which group it's in, but it's the same group, it's still group four. And then that then gives you some suggestions for management as well. So in this case, we know that it did not fit a benign uh, descriptor. It's over 10 centimeters. On ADNEX, 17% uh, risk of malignancy, predicting borderline. The ORAD score was four, and the histology was ovarian endometriosis with atypia, manifesting as a borderline serous tumor. So ADNEX was right, and it had started as an end endometrioma and then had become uh, a borderline cyst. So should you use ADNEX or ORADS? Um, they, they're, they're quite similar, but they have their, their own advantages. Both of them are on GE machines and uh, on some other machines as well. Uh, and on ADNEX, the advantage is it gives you um, a percentage risk of malignancy, but then gives you a suggestion for what kind of malignancy it might be. Whereas ORADS gives you good suggestions uh, for management. And the two systems have been compared, but that was the earlier version of ORADS, whereas it's currently in its second version. Um, and the two systems have got very similar sensitivity and specificity. Uh, and looking at the less than 1% risk of malignancy group, um, in ORADS it was just over that, and in IOTA it was just under that. So the two systems are very similar. I don't think there's been a comparison between IOTA and the version 2 of ORADS, um, but um, they, they are slightly different, but, but both are extremely useful. So we've done typical endometriomas, we've done an atypical endometrioma, and the second kind of atypical endometrioma is decidualization in pregnancy, which is described as vascularized smooth papillary projections. 
as in this example, this patient at 13 weeks gestation had a unilocular solid cyst. You can see that these papillae are strongly vascular. Um, and at 15 weeks, they had enlarged and it become more vascular still. At 24 weeks, uh, the populations had all but vanished. That's a TA scan. Then a TV scan again at three months postnatal. You can see it's now clearly an endometrioma uh, and the populations have gone. Um, but at uh, cystectomy, this was proven to be a benign ovarian endometrioma. So atypical endometriomas, this can be on imaging or it can be on cytology. And on cytology, atypical endometriosis refers to cytologic and architectural atypia. And it's worrying because it can be a potential precursor to endometriosis-associated ovarian cancer, especially endometrioid and clear cell cancer. The uh, European uh, Society of Human Reproduction and Embryology published this guideline in 2022 and described that the absolute risk of developing ovarian cancer in a woman's lifetime is 1,3 in 100, whereas a patient with endometriosis, the risk is nearly double at 2,5 in every 100. So it's a nearly double risk, but it's a very low overall risk nonetheless. And then what are these suspicious features in ovarian endometriomas that might make you think that this has become malignant? Um, they are vascularized, solid component with sudden growth, irregularity in populations, or an endometrioma in a postmenopausal woman. So what does uh, this case demonstrate? This patient was 40. She had eight months of bloating and primary infertility with a raised TA125. And in this transvaginal scan, you can see that this is one ovary and that is the other. So this is a right ovarian endometrioma with a 30 centimeter mass above it, which was the left ovary. So on transabdominal ultrasound, we got much better detail of this left ovarian mass. And you can see it's very irregular, multilocular solid with many irregular solid components and papillations. So I would describe it like this, an irregular ovarian multilocular solid cyst with more than 10 locules, more than four papillations, low level echogenicity of the cyst contents, um, thick irregular septi with strong vascularity, which I haven't shown you here, some shadowing and no ascites. So um, doing the ADNEX calculation, this gave us a risk of 68% and she fit ORADS group five. The histology of this was endometriosis and a grade three clear cell carcinoma of the left ovary. So this endometriosis had become malignant in the left ovary. So in conclusion, uh, don't call an ovarian mass complex like uh, any of these uh, on the right. Uh, we can do much better now using IOTA language uh, and the risk prediction models such as ADNEX and ORADS. Thank you.